Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw a realistic Mary. We're going to be using the grid method and we're going to be practicing with this image called Madonna of the Streets. This painting was made by Roberto Foruzzi around 1897. Because of how old it is, this image is in the public domain, which makes it a great classical image to practice with. There are lots of different ways to draw realistically, but grid drawings are nice because it can help trick your brain and break down complex shapes. And grids can help with proportions and you can scale your work to be larger or smaller easily. For this project, you need a piece of paper, a pencil, and a ruler. I printed my reference picture on a piece of paper so that I can draw on top of it without ruining my original picture. I have a free template that I'll list in the description if you'd like to use it for practice. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to draw grid lines on our reference picture. So I have my handy dandy ruler and I have a pencil. And this image is four by six inches. So you can break down a grid into any unit of measurement, but for this practice, I'm going to break it down into one inch squares. So I'm going to hold my ruler up against the picture and I'm going to mark lines on every inch line. So one, two, and three inches. And what I like to do is I like to do the same little marks down at the bottom. One, two, three. And the reason I do that is so that I can match up these marks that I made and connect the dots. And I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side. So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm going to line it up against my reference picture. It's six inches tall. And I'm going to place a mark on every inch. I'm going to connect those marks as well. And these are creating the horizontal lines of our grid. So in addition to putting down grid lines on your reference picture, you want to have the same grid lines on your piece of paper that you're drawing your sketch on. So I'm going to grid off this same sized rectangle of my template by marking every inch on my paper and gridding off this rectangle as well so that they match. So I have the same number of squares on this image as I do on my sketch. And I'm treating this truly as a sketch. I'm not doing it on nice paper. This is just regular printer paper. I can always transfer my finished drawing to a piece of nice paper once my sketch is all finalized. So basically what you want to do when you're doing the grid drawing method is you're looking at one square of your reference picture at a time and you are drawing what you see in that square. And one thing that you can do is you can block off that one square kind of like this. So that way you're only focusing on that one piece of the picture. So you don't have to do that, but um, this can be helpful um, if you want. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at this first square and I just see the little hint of a curve right here in the corner. So I want to match that curve in this square right here. Um, one thing that you can do that can be helpful is you can use something like a stick to kind of, if it's the same size as your drawing paper to measure the size of each little section that you see, kind of like this. So I know that this is that tall and it is about this wide. And I wanna connect these marks with a little curve. And that is matching what I see in that square. Um, the other thing I like to use little sticks like this for, this is just a barbecue skewer, 
is you can kind of line it up with your reference picture to see how high certain parts are. So now that I have that square done, I can shift this over and concentrate on this part right here. So I see the top of the head covering and um, I can see some of the hairline in that, in that space. So you can kind of look at the main line. So right here, there's this line for the top of the head, kind of at this angle. I can use my stick to kind of match that angle, if that's helpful. And I'm going to start to sketch that line that I see onto that grid. And the top's about here, so I can use my stick guide. There's this little part here that starts to come down at a little angle like this. And then I see this line here for the top of the fabric. And it comes about almost halfway across the width of the box. And I'm gonna draw this line here which is close to the center, kind of like this. And I can double check my measurements to make sure that I'm going far enough in my sketch. I can also see this little bit of her forehead sticking out. So I want to make sure that I'm putting in some marks to show that little section as well. So basically, um, you're looking at each square one by one and you are drawing what you see in that space. I feel like sometimes when we look at the picture all by itself, it can look really intimidating but when we break it down into smaller pieces, it doesn't seem as hard. It makes it a little bit more simple. So this is one of my favorite methods when I'm drawing realistic people because um, even when you've been drawing a long time, sometimes it can be tricky to figure out proportions. And so this is a nice way to kind of trick your brain into um, breaking down these complex lines and shapes into simpler ones. So one thing you can do with your grids is you're not confined to just a single square. If you needed to, you could take a square like this that has more information on it, like in the face, and you can break that down into smaller pieces. So I think I'm going to break this one down into some smaller grids So now that I have these extra squares on my good grid drawing, I can kind of more easily see where these different features line up. So sometimes what I do to trick my brain even further is I'll flip my reference upside down, kind of like this. That way it tricks my brain a little bit more. So I'm going to be putting in this part for the nose and 
I'm focusing more on just the lines and the shapes. So whenever you finish, you could um, either erase your grid lines or if you wanted to transfer this sketch onto a nicer sheet of paper so you can do watercolors or colored pencil or just regular shading, you can use something like tracing paper to trace um, the line art of your drawing and then transfer it onto a piece of nicer paper. So. Hopefully um, this was helpful in giving you an idea of one of many ways of drawing a little bit more realistically. Um, the grid method is nice because um, it tricks my eye, it helps me figure out proportions a little bit better, and I feel like it's a great way to um, introduce young people into learning how to draw a little bit more realistically as well.